Welcome back to another Keep It Up with the Clique Hi, I hope you guys are having a fantastic Thursday. Thank you for joining us today. So our topic today is the Alaskan Clique High versus the Husky. And basically, I just want to do a comparison. I know, you tell them. Yeah, a comparison between the two breeds. Um, of course, last week, if you guys were here with us, you know that we talked about the Alaskan Klikai versus the Pomsky, and I thought, well, it'd be fun to do a couple of the breeds that were used to actually create the Alaskan Klikai. So that is our topic. Um, if you guys are new, my name is Desiree. My daughter is behind the camera there running the show, and her name is Alexis, and we welcome you guys. Um, yeah, honey, did you get her bones? Rue's going crazy because she wants in. And so, we're going to get going. You want to give her this? If, I don't know if you guys remember last week we talked about the bully stick holder. Here, babe. Um, it works amazingly. I have to get more of them. But anyways, before we get started, I wanted to go over a few general housekeeping rules for those of you that are new. So we do go live every Thursday. We ask um, that you please do three question marks before you ask any questions. That way Alexis and the moderators can see those questions and not miss them. Um, we ask that you don't duplicate those questions, please. Um, of course, we ask that you stay on the topic of um, what we are talking about with those questions, unless you have a super chat or a super sticker. In those cases, you guys get to jump to the top of the question list and you can also ask any questions um, and doesn't have to necessarily be on topic. Um, if you are new and you don't know what Super Chat and Super Stickers are, that is, hi handsome, that is a donation money that we receive from our viewers. That money goes back into our program and into buying things for the dogs and for our live stream. And um, that allows you guys to jump to the top of the list for our thanks and appreciation for you guys. <laughs> Um, we have so much to talk about today, and I'm going to first say, of course, we are giving away a few things, and um, I want to share those really quickly, and then we are going to hop over and do a quick brief intermission while we go show you the little babies that we have to feed, and I kind of held off on feeding them so that you guys could see how we do it and what all's involved. Um, but real quick, I want to show you what we are giving away today. It is going to be a couple of masks. Alexis will pick right there in the booth. Oh, yeah, yeah. Alexis will pick the winners like she usually does. Um, they're usually um, super chat, super sticker, and engagement based. And so one is our original old school mask. Let me come closer for you guys. And these are 100% washable and um, pretty cool designs. This one is the gator mask, which goes over your face and you can use it to cover your nose and mouth or you can use it for scarves or any type of um, thing to keep your ears and face warm. So we're gonna give those away. Alexis will tell us probably around 7.15 or so, we'll give those away, which is what we usually do. I know you guys are wanting to know who's in here. Alexis. Never mind. I should have done it myself. I forgot I have this iPad. I can change the camera view. You want to open up the camera. Um, now I lost my train of thought. Alexis will pick who she's going to give those to around 7.15 or so. I already said that. Um, now, we are going to hop over before we get into our topic. You look pretty. And show you the babies really fast. And feed them. I'm specifically talking about Sky's puppies. Um, and... Kiara's little boy. Well, he's not very little. But before I run over there, Lexis, do you have any questions for me or can I? No, you're good. Okay. Um, I'm going to go over there and we will continue this. You want to switch the camera view? I know I need to turn that light off um, over there, but I'm going to move this. You want the, the little baby? Uh-huh. That's where I'm going because okay, I need to feed them. The I know. I had to move it because I need to talk loud. Yeah. Oh, of course they're all sticky. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off the heat lamp because the heat lamp is what we have to use in order to keep the babies nice and warm. Um, we have to do that because we keep our house freezing cold. And I'm coming out so our camera's at an angle, but it's more for you guys to see the babies. And so I want to show you guys what we have to do. So remember, Sky has. Um, Sky has five babies, and they are tiny, tiny, tiny. And if you guys remember, she wasn't drinking a whole lot of milk, so they're still really small. They know it's sleep time. And they are almost four weeks old, I think tomorrow. And so they are starting to become a mush. And what this is, is this is literally 
that need a little extra. And also, whenever they are starting to wean from mommy, we want them to be able to um, eat the food. But they don't have their teeth yet. So, I hope they can hear me. If you guys can't hear me, let me know. Because I am way over here. They're just saying that you're, you sound far away, which you are. Oh, I am. Okay. But can they hear me or no? Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to make this fast. So, what I'm doing is just putting some in here, and then I'm going to let them eat. I know. Look at it. So, my tiny, tiny, tiny are right there. Here. <laughs> can they seem okay? Yeah. Now, I'm going to wait with these two in a minute because... I'm letting the tiniest ones eat first because I feel like they get pushed out a lot more than the other puppies do. And so I just kind of feel like to see how they're doing. And I'm going to pull them and pull them. And then I'm going to put some more in there if I have to. He's almost done. And they are going to be fat and full now. And that's it. Alright. You see how fat his tummy is now? I'll hold him up for you guys in a little bit. But I needed to feed them. Over. Hi, babies. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> All right. I know that was quick, but I just wanted you guys to see the process of what we do to help feed these little guys. Um, and of course, we'll bring them up close and personal here in a little bit. I um, just needed to feed them. And in order for me to keep Sky out for a little bit so that I could show you and she doesn't go crazy. I thought, oh, I'll just show you guys live. All right, now we can get on topic, but do you have questions or can I go? I have one. Okay. How much and how many times per day should we be feeding our puppy when we bring them home? So that really depends on their size. So if the puppy is usually like gonna be a toy um, or a small mini, they need to eat three times a day. If they are um, a larger, like some of the puppies that are gonna be going home this week and next, they can drop down to twice. <laughs> they can drop down to twice a day. So it really just depends on their weight. Usually when they hit close to four and a half, five pounds, they can go to, um, to twice a day. Okay, we good? Yeah. All right, okay. Hi, pretty babies. Hi. All right, so Alaskan Klikai versus the Husky. And I just said Husky because I don't want to specifically say a Siberian Husky or Alaskan Husky, um, but this is pretty much based off of the Siberian Husky, although the Alaskan Husky has a lot of, a lot of very similarities, a lot of similarities as well. Um, so the Alaskan Husky, I'm going to go over the breed history real fast. And the Husky was developed in Siberia. It was brought to Alaska in 1908 for sled dogs, um, for sled dog racing, really. And it was developed to work in packs, pulling. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Um, so they were really working in packs to pull um, sleds. And they are medium-sized working dogs with a moderate to compact and well fur. And then the Klikai, originally developed in Alaska. Uh, by Linda Sperlin, of course, and this was in the late 70s until um, late 19, late 80s. I think it was 1988 that she actually made them available for other people, which was very few people. 
and then they became a recognized breed in 1995. And the Alaskan Klikai was was really bred to be a love size companion um, that had similar appearances to the Husky, but just miniaturized. Um, they're small to medium companion dogs, and they should be moderately compact um, and also well furred. Very, very brief descriptions of the history. Um, so there's two sizes um, that we're going to go over. How big are the Huskies? How big are the Klikai? So in the Siberian Huskies, they actually categorize them in size by male and female, not by breed as a whole, um, which is quite interesting. Hey, quit eating my phone. Um, but I'm not going to just go through every single thing. I'm going to give you the basics, right? So Huskies can be anywhere from 20 to 24 inches tall, and they can be 35 to 60 pounds. Um, again, that depends on the sex, and that's why there's a big variety. The Alaskan Klikai can be, uh, I'm going to say 10 inches. However, there's really no minimum size that the Alaskan Klikai can be. Um, it's just toy miniature standard, and anything 13 inches and under is a toy. However, I don't know what the smallest that's ever been produced. I don't know if there's any records of that, but I would just say 10 to 17 inches is the size of the height of the Alaskan Klikai. Now remember when we talk height, regardless of whether it's a Husky or a Klikai or a Pomsky for that matter, the height is from the ground to the top of their shoulders or called withers. <laughs> Let's put it on there. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Whoops, wrong she one. Too late. Too late. She, she moved. She was jumping up on there, but it was super cute. Oh, hang on. I need to know which one is which on here. Oh. I know. I moved everything, so now I'm like not yeah. used to where my buttons are, so I keep pushing the wrong one. We added the other camera back in. You remember, we haven't had that camera on where the um, Sky's puppies are in a while, so we had to move all of our buttons, and now we're trying to figure all of that out. But. Uh, little Quinn was jumping up on the top of the camera. <laughs> okay, so click highs. Um, so anything over 17 inches is considered a fall up to 17 and a half inches. So technically, they can be up to 17 and a half inches and still be in a breeding program, still be shown, um, but it is a serious fall. And hey, Kira, you better be nice. Anything over that is a disqualification. So we don't want to see anything. Let me guess. You went through the hole. Little Rusty went through the hole of the caterpillar and was stuck. I saw you. I saw you. Uh, okay. I know, I know. So there have been some reports of a clay pie being 18, even 19 inches tall. So when you think about... Huskies being 20 inches and a Klikai being 18, 19 inches tall. It's pretty similar to some of the smaller Siberian Huskies. Um, and so obviously we're trying to stay away from that because we do want them to be small. We do want them to be miniaturized. Um, and the Klikai can weigh really anywhere from 8 pounds to 25 pounds, generally speaking. Now there are reports, even in my own program, where I've sold puppies that I know are going to be pretty big that will hit... 30, even 35 pounds, um, which again is a big throwback and not something that we're looking for. But generally speaking, they should be anywhere from 8 to 25 pounds, again, depending on the size of um, your clay pie, if it's a toy miniature or a standard. Um, all right. They should be proportionate in height and weight. So if they weigh 15 pounds, they should be proportionate. They shouldn't be 11 inches tall and 15 pounds, so they should be pretty close um, in height and weight. All right, you let me know if you have any questions. Hey, hey, no, be nice. Okay, uh, let's... Yeah, Emily said, does Linda still breed? No, Linda hasn't been involved in the breed. She doesn't even own a Klikai um, for several, several years, so no. You'd be a nice girl. Yeah, you'd be a nice girl. You'd be nice. Are we good? Yeah. Okay. So now let's talk coloring. Um, coloring is 
pretty interesting because the last one click I have very specifics when it comes to be nice. Um, what the colorings should be, what's acceptable. <laughs> what are you girls doing up there? You guys like your chair? Did you guys like their chair? I got them a Paw Patrol chair. <laughs> you're gonna fall, you're gonna fall. All right, back to colors. So we have very specific colors that the Brie needs to be. Lex, can you switch it back? <gasps> She's just laying there so pretty. <laughs> hey, pretty girl. But they can't see me, I'm not even in the bubble. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I felt like I was talking to my feet. <laughs> I know, you tell them, you tell them. So the Alaskan Clique Hike, um, has very strict requirements for coloring and masking, and the Siberian Husky can have a wide variety. So Huskies can have all colors, from all white to all black, um, and anything and everything in between. They have a variety of markings that's common, like on the head, including striking patterns that go down onto their back. They can have patches. They can be called piebald, which is where actually they'll have spots. Um, of a different color. The Alaskan Klikai have to have very specific colors of black, gray, red, brown. So red and brown kind of, hey, hey, do you need to go on timeout? Kira thinks that she should be the king of this crew and she's not. You gotta be nice. Be nice. Um, we have to have distinct and visible markings. So they can't be lacking a, a mask. They have to have contrasting color and markings, and they should be symmetrical, of course, um, as far as breeders and breed standards go. Siberian Huskies, it doesn't matter. They don't care. None of that um, is as important as other things to them. Okay, honey, can you take her? She's going to time out in her crate, please. You gotta go. In your crate. Okay. Um, so the contrasting lighter color needs to be like on their feet, underneath their stomach, on their neck, going down to their chest, their, their butt area, their, it's called breeches, so the underside of their tail. All of that needs to be lighter contrasting color. It cannot be all solid. <laughs> I know. It can't be all solid like you, like you. Yeah. So the whites, let's talk about the whites. So the whites are a fault in our breed. They cannot be bred. They should not be in a breeding program. They should not be shown. They are strictly pets. They go to pet homes. Now we still get them, um, but just like anything, we have to make decisions on what's best for our breeding program. And sometimes in my breeding program, I know that I can get a white. I take that chance because of the hopes of something amazing. And if you look past his coloring, his coat, his personality, his structure, they're, they're great, they're perfect, but he is lacking something that is very, very important to Linda's Berlin, and that means we need to adhere to those um, breed standards, and so of course, he goes to a pet home. Most of our puppies go to a pet home anyways, um, but you always wanna breed to improve your lines and improve the lines of the parent dogs in hopes of getting something that you can potentially keep and add to your own program. All right, are we good? Um, Ashley asked if the white puppy is gonna stay white forever. Yeah, yeah, he'll stay white forever. You will see some pictures of adult clay kite that will have um, a little tinge of um, something that's kind of coming through as a marking um, but really, they're white with just um, a lighter white and a darker white, I guess you could say. More of like maybe an off-white in some spots. She but, went back in the chair. Yes, yeah, she did. <laughs> You're so, oh, no, it's a different one. Earlier it was quartz. Now it's quickly. Hey, don't destroy that chair. They're going home tomorrow. Believe it, they're going home. No, that'd be nice. All right, so on to their coats. Um, and I'm not talking coat color, but their coats themselves. So their coats are very, very similar. Um, they both should have a double coat, medium in length, um, well furred, and not to obscure the outline of their body, right? So 
Same thing we talked about last week with the palm skis and the plecai. You know, the palm skis have a much longer um, coat, a lot of them, not all of them, and that's very acceptable and desirable in the palm skis. Um, in the klikai and in the huskies, um, not so much so. They can't um, distort the outline of the dog, um, and so we stay away from anything that we would consider a long hair. Um, and so both of them are the same when it comes to that. Um, as far as their eye colors, uh, very similar, basically the same thing. They can have any combination, all blue, all brown, uh, two different colored party eyes, that type of thing. So very, very same, uh, very, very similar. Also, hey. yes, hey. no, no. Um, Sandy's little crazy dog is chewing up your bed. Are you chewing up the bed, mister? He said, who, me? Do you get to take it away? Yeah, we'll take it away. Um, I have a question from Mary. Okay. She said, are huskies sometimes bred to be all white, or is it similar to the Kikai? No, huskies actually, there's um, a lot of breeders that have all whites in their program, and they breed for specific colors in combination with a, a lot of other things. But yeah, they, they uh, can intentionally breed for whites, um, if that's what they're looking for with something in their program. Hi. Hi. Okay. Um, next Rolex is, will be Aspen. Yes, he's going to be Aspen. And he's going to live with um, Klaus. He's going home next week. Huh? Yeah, you're going home next week. Okay, so now let's talk about their tails. Um, their tails are actually pretty different. Um, of course, they're both well furred, but they carry them very differently. So the Siberian Husky's tail should not be a tight curl. It shouldn't even be curled and touching their bags um, for the most part. And you quit eating that. Um, theirs is usually down or more out um, or slightly curved up. The Alaskan Klikai is usually up and over their backs and curled. Um, not always. I mean, they can go outside. Thank you. Um, but it is... Definitely common practice that they uh, that they are curled. They both um, should have somewhat long tails. The Alaskan Klikai's tail needs to be long enough to curl up and touch the, the back of their um, the top of their backs. So that's super important in the Alaskan Klikai. If they're too short of a tail, it's a fault. Um, but the breed should have tails long enough. Ruth, go outside and go potty first. Um, I have a question. From Sean. Okay. He said, I was reading that huskies were bred with curled tails so that they don't get tangled or ran over when pulling a sled. Do you know if that is true? Hmm. I don't know if that's true. Um, that's quite interesting. But I don't know that it's true um, because the breed doesn't actually say that they're supposed to be tightly curled. So it could be that it's, it's more of a standing up and over, but... That's interesting. If that's true, then they bred that out um, for whatever reason. And then I have a question from Liz. Okay. She said, do Klikai jump as high as Huskies, you know, uh, proportionate to their size? Oh, yes. Definitely. I have to, I have to pick this up real fast. Uh, yeah, they definitely um, can be jumpers and escape artists for sure. Um, but, yeah. And then um, Diana said, compared to Huskies, are Klee Kai as high energy and, and talkative? <laughs> yes, we're going to get into that in a second. Yes. Of course, I'm going with the main characteristics first of the looks um, of the breeds, um, the appearances, you know, that type of thing. But we're going to get into um, some of the other traits here shortly. But <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hi, pretty girl. I just hope that you don't go tumbling over. Yeah, you can't go tumbling over. No. You want to come close? Is that what you want? Is that what you want? I love this chair, and they love this chair. <laughs> Nala, you better move. I know what you want. Come on. I already knew what you wanted. You were waiting for the clipboard to get and out of the look way. look at Quinn and Quigley. Hi, pretty girls. Hi. Now they're all going to want up here. Huh? Yeah. As soon as I pay attention to someone, please say them out. Hey, be nice. Okay. 
temperament. Let's go over temperament real quickly. So the temperament of the Siberian Husky is friendly, gentle, um, alert, and outgoing. Um, it doesn't display po possessive qualities of a guard dog, okay? So nor are they overly suspicious of strangers. Siberian Huskies are not good watchdogs. They're not good guard dogs. They're usually very friendly, very aloof, um, pet me, pet me, love me, uh, take me for a run type of breed. Um, the Alaskan Klikai um, are a little different, for sure. Um, they're very curious, they're intelligent, they're active, they're quick, they're agile, they're loyal, they're alert, um, but they could be more alarming with strangers, they could be more reserved or take a little longer to uh, trust somebody or warm up to somebody. Like, they don't just openly give trust. You have to earn their trust. Um, so very different when it comes to that. I wouldn't say that either breed is, is watchdog material, however, or guard dog material. However, they will probably, the Klikai, will let you know if somebody is knocking at the door type of thing. But if somebody were to try to break, break in, they would run. <laughs> they're not going to, they're not going to be on attack mode. Um, so they're only really going to just let you know that somebody's there. Um, hi. Okay, okay, come on, come on. Okay, energy. Let's talk energy for a second. So the Husky and the Klikai are both pretty active dogs that can board very easily. Uh, we talk about that a lot here oh, on the Alaskan Klikai and how um, they get bored and we don't want to keep the same toys um, and the same bones um, or the same walks, the same routine because, when I say routine, routine and walking because, um, yeah, let's, yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. No. Oh. Uh, she's getting something else. Okay. I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. Um, I was going to say. Yeah. I was wondering what you're doing. Sorry. <laughs> We're having a conversation on the, on the monitor. <laughs> um, and so they both get bored easily, like I was saying. So you have to continually um, keep them engaged. And by doing that, you're going you're not going to come up here. Um, by doing that, you're going to help burn off some of that energy. So because they are um, pretty high energy, Huskies definitely more than Klee high, um, they do best if they are exercised and um, um, challenged. Because what better way to tire a dog but to challenge them? So we'll get into that a little bit more here in a second. At least you guys aren't being super loud. I can talk, huh? Um, so exercise needs. Um, okay, Siberian Huskies are definitely very high energy. So when you're gonna compare the two Siberians, trust me, you guys, a lot of you already know my history. I've had Siberians, I've had wolf hybrids. Um, there's not a comparison. There goes Taz again. It's not Taz. Oh, it is a Taz. You gotta tell them what happened to Taz. Oh, <laughs> I will. I'll tell you. Oh, they're all gonna want to know now that you said that. I know. So I don't know if you guys remember last week, my sister-in-law and the family was all on here, and it was recently her birthday, and she wants a Klikai so badly again. And Chris told her that if he, if she could take one home right now, she could have one. So we agreed to let Taz go live with them. Um. And so he is here with them. Of course, we see them probably every week. So it's not like he's going anywhere. Um, but we let him go live with Nicole and Chris. And um, fingers crossed, he gets along well with their dogs. They have two big dogs. Um, and so, of course, he'll still be intact. He'll still be in our breeding program. But it's nice to let some of our dogs live somewhere else because, I'll be honest, I can't raise everybody. I don't want to raise everybody. It's too much work. So it benefits me, and it and it definitely gives them uh, any puppy. So we'll see. But he'll be back. Don't worry. He'll be on the live often. Um, in fact, it's Wyatt's birthday party this weekend, so we'll see him this weekend. Yeah. All right. Back to the exercise. I have a quick question. Sure. Um, do we can I get along with Huskies? Hmm. Yeah, you know, it's kind of funny. Um, if a if a puppy is socialized with other dogs and breeds in general, they usually are very well rounded with all other dogs. 
However, when they see another Klikai or another Husky or Malmu, it's something weird. Like, I don't know how they know, but they know those are like family. And they are, they're usually, okay, I can't talk. They're usually drawn to their own kind. Um, so anything that's a northern breed, they usually are more drawn to them. But yeah, they do get along very well with other um, similar breeds. She loves that chair. They've all taken turns. Because now that's, that's Quinn in there. Earlier it was Quigley, and before that it was Quartz. But yeah, you went in there the most. Okay, this is my Walmart special, guys. It's literally a toddler chair. <laughs> they love it. I always look in the toddler section and the baby section for so many things because um, so many, they would love to climb in that. Sure enough, and it's small enough for them. They just hop right in it. That's awesome. Okay, so back to the Huskies and the energy level and exercise needs. So there are definitely more. Um, hey, no. No, let me get the most. They have more energy, so they're going to require more exercise. You have these bully sticks right here? No, I have, oh yeah. Um, they're going to require more of uh, everything, more mental stimulation, longer walks, longer hikes, longer runs, everything. But the Klikai are still a pretty active breed, um, and so they still require exercise, mental stimulation, they all know what time it is. So I got them, of course, our, our normal treats that we always go to, which is the star marks. Let me bring these up in case the people who are on here don't know. Um, the cow tails. These we've been getting for probably a month now. And these are something that they absolutely love. Um, and now they're going to try and steal the bully sticks. Those aren't even opened, guys. So... Here, look. Bully sticks stink. They stink, they stink. They're not even open yet. But yet, they all know they're trying to get them. So these are the thin ones. We've talked about that a few times. The thin versus the thick. Adult or older dog, you get them the thicker ones. These are a lot thinner, which are perfect for puppies. Uh-uh, you know better. Sit down. No, I'll sit. intelligent breeds um, I wouldn't say they're easy to train they're smart so they they understand what you want they pick things up rather quickly um, but they don't necessarily always want to do what we want them to do which means they're stubborn so both breeds can have some stubbornness um, and only want to do things when we want when they want to not when we want them to um, and sometimes flat out refuse like going in their crate, just flat out refuse or tell you all about it. Um, some similarities that they both have are they're both double coated. They both shed, obviously. They're both pretty vocal breeds. Um, they're both, of course, strikingly beautiful. They uh, both have great facial, uh, facial, facial expressions. Um, they are comedians. Both breeds are hilarious and always uh, make you laugh whenever, hey, you've got to go potty, go potty over there. Hold on, go potty over there. Hold on, you go there. We go there. I hope you win. Okay. Um, they, of course, are stubborn. They're both social pack animals. So they, they want to be with somebody else or another dog. Did you lose your bone? It's right here. It's right here. Here. 
It's right here. Um, so they require interaction from the pack or from their human owners. Um, leaving them alone for an extended amount of time is going to cause problems, boredom, um, potential destructive behaviors, that type of thing. So a lot of similarities when it comes to um, just their traits and behaviors. Um, and of course, their coats and their shedding and their maintenance. Um, they both do best if they are exercised and challenged. Um, mental stimulation. So whether that be just training above and beyond mm -hmm. the basic commands, whether it be agility type of work or nose work, or um, even just going to like the retirement homes or hospitals and doing some type of therapy work is all great for them because you want to introduce them, of course, to as many things as you can. But it's going to also stimulate them. You don't want to overstimulate, but stimulate them with different things because it's going to keep them from being bored. Um, and so that is pretty much it. I have a quick question. Yes. Tanya asked, are the Kikai or Huskies more stubborn? <laughs> oh. Um, it's the clay tie. I could be wrong, but I'm going to go off of my own experience. Um, from my experience, I think the clay ties are a little more stubborn. And I think that's probably because it's our fault. We spoil them more. Um, we put them in our beds more. We don't uh, make them sleep in their crate. We give in a lot easier because they're smaller. Um, but I could be wrong, but I think it's the clique. In my experience, it is for sure. Um, any other question? Alexis? No, sorry. Um, me and Kylie were looking at everybody's Instagrams. <laughs> everybody's putting them all in the chat, so Kylie pulled one up. Oh, awesome. Yay. Um, I see that we have quite a few people on here. How many thumbs ups do we have, people? 50. Okay, so you guys that are new, I don't know if we have any new people. Did anybody say they were new? No. Um, if you guys are new, please type new and let us know that you're new so we can welcome you guys. But also do me a favor, if we have 95 people on here right now, that means that we need at least 40 of you guys to hit that thumbs up button for us. That allows uh, YouTube to know that the content we're producing obviously is something you guys like. And um, of course we wanna see that you guys are enjoying what we're doing here. So if you could please take a second and do that, I would appreciate it. And then, um, yay, I see it going up. Thank you guys. If you are new or if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do so. The reason I say that is because I see analytics for YouTube and like, you can let her in here, honey. Like 55% of our views are from people who are not subscribed to us, which I thought was quite surprising um, that more than half of our viewers are not subscribed to our channel. And so if you're not subscribed, I get it. Not everybody wants to subscribe or not everybody's even logged into YouTube. Uh, but if you do subscribe, then at least you're notified when we go live or when we post videos. Um, and of course, YouTube likes to see that um, we're engaging with our community and our viewers. So do me a favor and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit the bell notification. Hey. Yes. Um, Candace says she lives in Wisconsin and her boyfriend's grandparents have a farm and she's excited to see how her future pup reacts to cows, horses, chickens, etc. <laughs> That's awesome. We would love to see that. We would love to see that. Uh, that would be really awesome. Ruth, come lay down. Lay down. Lay down. She's like, my crate's gone, all the stuff's in the way. Where are you going to go? Huh? Where are you going to go? Um, I do, before I bring puppies up close and personal. Thank I, you, Sue. Thank I have a super chat really, really quick. Okay. Um, my nephew has a husky that, to me, has a wolf face. Do they breed any with wolves? I mean, they're, yes, for sure. Whenever we owned our wolves, um, we used to breed to huskies to bring the content down. Um, and of course, our first one that we bought was um, part husky. So they definitely will add the Siberian husky into um, into a wolf hybrid, which if you don't know what that is, it's a, it's a 
part dog, part um, wolf combination. And so, yeah, they definitely do. Um, by the way, that's our first super anything, and okay. it's 641. Oh, well, that's fine. Then we don't have to give things away. That means we don't have to mail things. No, that means Sue is the only one. <laughs> that's fine. As of right now, Sue is winning. <laughs> Yay, Sue! <laughs> um, speaking of winning, I do want to take a second and um, just say thank you to Catherine. Um, I'm sure all of you guys know and see her on every single week, and she does a lot for us, like moderating, and Michelle somehow magically became a moderator. None of us know how, but I want to say thank you to both of you guys um, for jumping in there and answering all of these questions and sending people, directing them to the right links and that type of thing, because without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do this on our own and, and be somewhat organized. Um, and so with that, I do want to send Catherine a hoodie um, for just everything that you do for us. So I'm gonna send you a hoodie out and I'll email you just to confirm size. But if you guys can all say thank you to her, um, we appreciate you and everybody else appreciates you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, if you don't have a question, I'm gonna ask uh, one more thing, okay? Are we good enough? No, you're, you're good. Okay, so my next thing I wanted to bring up real quickly is Thanksgiving is fast approaching. Thanksgiving is on a Thursday. Of course, we are not going to live stream on Thanksgiving. Thank you, um, Candace. Thank you, Candace. So we are not going to do that. Um, so we're going to actually take a break and take that week off. Um, so we have two weeks that we will still do it, right? We have next week and the week after that, and then we will take a break for the week of Thanksgiving. And then when we resume, um, I think that's the first week of December. So the week of Thanksgiving, we will take time off. And then of course, Christmas, we're probably gonna do the same thing. Now that doesn't mean I won't Thank sneak you, Sandy. in. Thank you, Sandy. I might sneak in a quick little just live stream like I like to do on a Sunday morning or something. Um, but I'm not going to commit to a, a full show on Christmas week and Thanksgiving week. Okay, um, calendars are in, so get your orders in. We've been shipping calendars like crazy. And I am going to go over there now, unless you have other questions. No, nope, everything's and, in, thank you. Um, turn on the light and let you guys see the little ones up close and personal. Um, and then we'll get Sassy's puppies to, um, I'm hoping, I'm gonna try to take the iPad over and see if it'll work with Wi-Fi. And if it does, then yay, we can just go over there, but we'll see. Uh, so, Alexis, if you will, let me get over there and check the lighting and stuff before you turn that on. And I'm gonna move this before, but for now, if you could just put it on the floor. So give me a second, guys, I'm gonna head over there. See what they're doing. Huh.
that are dumb? <laughs> Lindsay, yes. There's another boy because you have so many boys. <laughs> what do you guys think? Blue? Yes, yes, he's blue. And then my tiny, my tiny, tiny top top. Remember my tiny one I said it kind of looks a little silly? There he is. He still looks a little silly. He's looking better. Hey. And he Be nice. is blue as well. And then... Where are we at? I don't remember now. Did I do all five? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Tracy asked if all five will be toys. Uh, they're going to be pretty small. Toys to minis for sure. Really small. Let's see if I can put two up. <laughs> for like weight. I have the camera up at an angle so that you guys can see down. So it's harder for me to uh, let you guys see me. We love him. <laughs> He's our favorite. Our absolute favorite, just because he's really light. <laughs> he gets carried all the time, huh? Yeah. All right. That is Sky's babies. Now we can check that. What was that? The Sky's teas. We already. Oh yeah. You. Okay, so. We have to name you. I'm talking to my wife. <laughs> Brady wants to know what we have to name you. We have to name hymns. We have to name hymns. Hymns, <laughs> homes. Um, okay, so I'm going to attempt to take the iPad over, but we have to name. Sassy's puppies. Did all of you guys see the photos I just posted? I hope. Um, use two boys, one girl. Can you pee over there? Thank you. Oh, she looked for bone. One girl, two boys. So if you guys can do that, I'm gonna try to get onto this app real fast. Um, it, did it show up, Lex? It uh, did, right? Um, I don't know. I was looking at something. Yes, it did. Okay, so I'm gonna have Alexis click on this real fast. All right, cool. This is kind of fun. Don't make them sick. I know. Don't make you guys sick. Ruse, they're walking away. Oh. <laughs> they just, they just. Well, that ain't gonna work. The puppies knocked it over and ended it. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it off for a second. I'm gonna go over there, and then it'll pop on. And then you guys can see them real fast. Oh, and I, then... hope it, I hope it connects though. I know, it should. It should, hopefully. Okay. All right, let's see. Probably not. Oh, um, maybe I can change it. Oh, yeah. Oh, what? Yeah, though. Sorry, guys. 
Are we back? Now we are. I had to, I, I don't know what happened. That was weird. The live stream, it's told me on the screen that there was a problem and then I had to resume it and all of a sudden everything just started loading. Oh. So are we, are we on? Yeah. And I'm back on the normal screen, but. That's fine. That was a scare. So I wonder, did they see anything? Yeah, they did. Just not, not a whole lot. Okay, I'll bring them in here. Okay. Oh, you guys Everybody's doing names right now. I know, I see them all coming through. <laughs> yeah, Catherine said that hers froze, but it's back on now. Oh, yeah, you could put her in her crate. Oh, okay. Mm. Um, yeah. Do you want to tell everybody what the genders are and everything? Uh, I already did. Oh. One, did. one girl, two boys. Okay. One girl, two boys. Um, I'm just going to bring them in here for you guys. So that way we don't have, I don't know if, if we glitched out whenever I took the iPad over there. I don't, I don't think so. We tested it earlier and it worked fine, but, uh, no, I don't think it was that. It was just really weird. Like I think because it was another thing on the Wi-Fi, because everything's on the Wi-Fi right now, it's trying to pull too much internet. I don't think so. What else on the Wi-Fi? Well, it did that last week too. Yeah. That's a bummer. We're trying to make it to where I can use the iPad and walk around without cables and be able to show you guys things. Hi. Um, it's a work in progress. That's for sure. All right. I'm waiting for my husband to let Sassy outside so she doesn't freak out when I take her babies right now. <laughs> Do we have any questions? I know you guys are writing the names. This is Rue. You guys all know Rue, my little fatso. Rue's in season, so nobody can be near her when it comes to boys. That's why you guys haven't seen Simba. Huh. I know. Now you want up here? You want up here? Is this yours? Is this yours? We love that one. All right. Are we good? I'm going to I'm going to grab one of the babies, okay? Okay. Let me turn this light on real fast. You got him, baby? Yes. Make it up, make it up, make it up. No, but not your baby. You have no babies. Um, I have a couple questions. Okay, hold on. No, Ruth, stop it. Leave the baby alone. They're going to make her angry. Oh my god, stop. He does not want to focus. He's focusing on the, the caterpillar. Why? You see it? It keeps doing that? Yeah. I'm gonna go this way. Oh no, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> okay, why is it every third time we go live, I have a problem with this darn camera? There, there, there. I think you may block the, the wall. No, I was blocking the wall and it didn't work. It was going with the caterpillar, it was focusing on the caterpillar. Mm -hmm. Alright, so this is one of the boys. Rude, they're not yours. <laughs> He's not Rude. yours. <laughs> He says, I'll take him. I'll take him. I'll take him. Okay. This one is the girl. I'm going to keep both because 
Um, they're pretty close. So all three of the puppies actually have pretty uh, open masks. So this one is the girl. This one is the boy. Very similar. One's a little more tan, has some more buff coloring. <laughs> Now it's focusing. That's funny. Okay. No. no. And then the last one. Thank you, Stacy. We have a question from, from uh, Super Chat. Okay. So another boy. It's because Rue went by. Did you see that? When she went by, then it was like, oh, I'm going to focus on her. All right. Before she freaks out, I'm going to give her back her babies. I actually give you the shoulder backs real fast. No, leave them alone. They're not yours. <laughs> her ears went up so tall. Why do you have your hand? Your paw way up there. <laughs> All right. Let me give them back. And then we can name them. Yes, Sandy, that was mom crying. <laughs> okay, you names. No, so, no questions. Oh yeah, questions. Stacy asked if, um, have we gone to see Stone tonight? Oh, I forgot, I was gonna put him with the babies over there. He can come in here. You gonna hand him to me? Oh, oh yeah, he's right here. Give me her, baby. Um, I was gonna put him in with Sky's puppies because I want you guys to see the difference. This is ridiculous. Um, they're a week apart, a little over a week apart in age, and he got weighed and dewormed today, and he's four pounds eight ounces. Up higher a little bit. <laughs> oh, I see. I see what it is. It's that eye. I know. Yeah. Oh my god, this camera is gonna drive me crazy. I have it. I must have it on the wrong setting. But I don't know how it would be on the wrong hit setting. info and and then you gotta hit the info button and then hit the button and then hit the center. Thank okay. you. Hey, look over here. Okay, so he has, he's going to have light brown hazily eyes. I don't know if it'll show with this. Do you see the little bit of blue in there? He's like, that's bright. Do you see that? Oh, yeah, you can see it. But they're not blue. You can see that they're going to be lighter. So he's going to have like a hazily color eye. Um, and watch how funny this is. He's a porker. He weighs more than most of the puppies in here. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. But he's also the only puppy. Um, and so he gets all the nutrients. Now that he's actively moving, he's going to lose some of that puppy fat. Come here. Let them move around, guys. They want to see him, too. Come here. All right. Was that the question that you had? Did you have other questions? I have a million questions. That was just a super chat. <laughs> okay. Well, um, while you're asking a question, I'm going to pick up who. I'm listening, though. Can we see Aggie's babies and Khaleesi's babies up close? Sure. We'll get to that. Let me do this. But what What else? Um, you mentioned previously raised huskies. Wait, what? Oh, sorry. You mentioned you previously raised huskies. How long did you do so and what made you change? Um, so I had huskies and um and then switched to wolf hybrids when I did not have any children yet. So um it was was really easy whenever you don't have kids and you don't have to worry about anything other than your dog or dogs, 
And um, once we started having kids, um, Brayden and Alexis were itty bitty and they couldn't even enjoy a nice yard. They got to play in dirt <laughs> because the big dogs just destroy everything and they, they take up a lot of time in your life. And so you have to make decisions on what's best for your family. And so that's what I had to do. And that's why I got out of, um, at that time it was the wolf hybrids. Um, but if I were to ever go to something else and my kids were grown, um, I, I mean, I love the wolf hybrids. Don't mind me, I'm cleaning up the litter boxes so that it doesn't stink in here. How do you know that they're um, in season? Oh, they're a bloody mess and they're grumpy. I almost said the B word. Uh, they're grumpy, mm -hmm. they're moody for sure. Um, they're flagging, so they always want everyone to clean them. But, but really, they get really swollen from the bottom side and they actually spot, they, um, like women, they have a menstrual cycle. Um, is the light gray a boy, guys? Yes. Yes, the light gray is a boy. Um, the lightest gray is a boy. All right. Um, this is for Come here. Sassy's puppies. Is the girl a red? There's no, there's no reds. They're all gray. Are they Simba's? Yes. Um, I just set it up there in case there was more. Did Nala's mask look like theirs when she was a baby? Not as bad, but similar, yeah. Um, be nice, Kira. Be nice to that baby. Yeah, so a lot of times the, the nose bar is going to come in um, and get darker and actually have a mask when they get older. So when they're pretty young, they don't necessarily always have it and it will get more developed. Leave that baby alone. Will stone be a standard? Yes, I think so, for sure. He's, he's not super, super tall, but he is pretty big for his age. Um, but yeah. He won't be oversized. No, he won't be oversized. He'll, he'll lose a lot of, right, like right now, I mean, he's just a chunk. Um, but when I look at, you guys, everyone don't need to clean him. He's fine, trust me. Um, he has a pretty big head. His ears are pretty big, like they're still pretty floppy. And um, his... <clears throat> But we're going to compare. I was holding her to show you compare the two heads. Huh. I okay. noticed Rue, that's Rue, right? Has a really thick wolfy tail. Do the tails change much as the puppies get older? Yeah, they do. Um, so right now, of course, everything is thinner and scrawnier looking and it'll get fuller um, as they get older. But not every Klikai has the same tail either. Um, or a coat for that matter. Some are thicker than others, um, fuller than others. Are you guys all jealous? Rue has a beautiful coat and tail for sure. Uh, she resembles Kika a lot when it comes to that. Um, is there a chance for black and white puppy soon? Um, I don't know. I, I don't have, I only have one more litter due. Um, I don't know. I mean, there is. Autumn is red. Um, she could give us all three colors. But that's it. Like, I need a break, guys. I need a break. How big are Sassy's puppies? They're they're not huge, um, but they're they're only a few days old, a week old actually. So thank you for the kisses. It's too hard to tell anything early on them, but. Uh, we don't say anything on that for several weeks. I want to compare heads. Hold on. Come here, pop up. They want to see you up close. You can keep asking questions. I'm just going to show them heads. Uh, Emily asked, um, you always talk about the snake leads for training. What age do you start? Oh, eight weeks. Eight weeks. I put them on that thing as soon as I can um, so that they know who's in control for sure. I'm, I'm going to switch this really fast. I want to see if I can fix this 
to focus, guys. I'm listening and I'm answering questions, but give me a second because it's not focusing the right way. Um, go ahead, Les. That's it. So if I click on that one, maybe. Okay, let's see if that works. So I'm gonna show you an eight week old and a four week old. You can see the head differences. Watch out babies. Uh oh. Turn back up. Okay. Oh, that's better. Focus right away. So I had the settings wrong. So the gray is Quinn and she is eight weeks old and going home tomorrow. And then, <laughs> and then look at Chubbs over here. His mom, okay, his mom is a toy. Just so you guys know, she's a toy. He weighs more than every puppy in here, except for um, here. Come here. Now, I want to talk to you guys a bit about tear stains. Come here, babies. Um, you know, we talk about tear stains and what causes them, what are they. Um, we talk about their watery eyes and, oh yeah, excuse me, come here. Hey, real um, quick, um, yeah. when is autumn due? The middle of August. Uh, yeah. Second, August? I'm sorry. Middle of November, October, November. Yeah, January. Just kidding, guys. Yeah, middle of November. <laughs> i got to keep you guys in suspense. Come on. So this is Quigley. You guys remember Quigley? Quigley? She's not going to look up. She says no. <laughs> there. And Chunky. Even her, who was the biggest. You guys remember? She was the biggest. And look at his paws are the same size as hers. They're the same. You're a porker. Um, so tear stains, let's talk about that. So Khaleesi is the mother to um, Rolex and Rusty. And Khaleesi has pretty good tear stains. Like they started to go away somewhat when she was here but not completely. Hey, 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 you better be nice. Um, and it's kind of interesting that both of her sons have very slight staining. And so I have a feeling that there's some genetic tendencies here because theirs wasn't that, that bad and they might go away, but it also is pretty windy here lately. Oh my gosh, look at behind us. Look at the baby. <laughs> You're silly. We're talking about you. Um, but so both of them have a little bit. Oh, you switched her. Yeah, I put it on her. Of some staining on their eyes, which is watery eyes. And um, I'm hoping that it is just because it's been windy and because him especially, he loves, Rusty loves to play in the litter box. Um, even though the litter that we use is safe for the Klikai or dogs in general and it's not dusty, um, I'm wondering if it has something to do with that. But, <laughs> but yeah, they do have some staining. Um, I wanted to just talk to you about that briefly. If, if in fact, they keep that staining um, in watery eyes, then I'm going to tell both of the owners they should um, try switching their food and see if there's something to do with maybe an allergy uh, or reaction to the food we eat. Maybe it's the bones, um, something that it is causing it because I don't know what it is. Do you have questions? Yeah. Um, oh, there it is. Um, Emily said, Okay, eight weeks, then I better start. I bought, this is with the lead. 
Um, I better start. I bought one because she is insane with the harness, so I'm going to try. Any tips? Um, when, when she says insane with the harness, meaning like she just doesn't listen and you can't control her, I'm guessing. Um, um, I'm guessing the same thing. Yeah, I'm guessing so. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole reason why I hate, I don't like harnesses. I just don't like them. Um, as far as tips for the um, choke chain, I mean, you're just going to make sure you, first of all, make sure you get the right size. You don't want it too big. What's wrong? Are you stuck over there again? Yep, you are. Why did you go in the hole? Hold on. What are you doing? You got to come back. Come back. <laughs> Quartz was through the hole again over there. So if if the choke chain is not the right size, then you're not going to be successful, and it could actually be. Um, Emily said she won't let me put it on, and she freaks out. The choke chain? No, her harness. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. Well, um, so when you put the choke on. Make sure, I'm going to put it on um, Kira, but make sure that you put it in the shape of a P, okay? So in case you don't know, I'm going to grab another one to show you real fast. So when you put it on the dog's head, this is for all of you guys, if their head is here behind me and you're going to put this on, it should be shaped like a P. So see this long line? Okay, so you can make a P. If you can make a P, then that's how it's going to go on their head. Okay, so it's same if it was reversed. The reason for that is because if not, this right here is not going to um, loosen on its own. It's going to snag. So it's super important that this is on the dog correctly. Here, come. And come. And so... Whenever you hook it to her, just like any regular leash, at first, just loose. You gotta make sure it's loose. Come here. Derek, come. She's like, no, I'm gonna go with some bone. No. Come here. Um, get her used to it like that when you're home. Leave it on her. My adults, I leave them on them because I'm not worried about them getting it stuck on something. If it hangs too far and it's too loose, it can get stuck on something. So be careful with that. So first, you're just gonna let her have it on just let her get used to it. Then you're going to hook the leash to it. It's the same thing as a regular collar. Ooh, I can't even talk. Um, and sh she's going to scream her head off. The first time she tries to take off, it's going to jolt her. Um, and she's going to learn. You guys, sometimes tough love is not a bad thing. Of course, you want to make sure you're not hurting, hurting her. Um, and that she's still safe. But this breed is stubborn. And they're dramatic. They're the most dramatic breed ever. Like, they think you're killing them for nothing. So, if you let that get the best of you, I mean, Emily, you've already had a clean cut. You know better. You can't just let them win. Just start off slow, hook it onto her, slowly call her. The best thing to do is have a treat, have food, have a reward, and have her come with it on loosely until she gets used to it. She will learn very, very quickly. What you need to do whenever you are walking her is I should do a whole a whole show on this just so you guys all see the same thing. Um, where's Nolly? Come here now. Come here. Come here, Mama. Nala. She's like, oh me. You're too chunky. This one fits you right now. <laughs> Rue, you need to go. You need to go. You're so gross. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> so, I don't know how easy this is going to be with all these puppies in here. All you're going to do is gently guide her with your treats. So you know how we talk about um, doing the treats and training? Come here. No, I'll get over here. Come here, Ruth. Um, so all you're going to do is gently, except that these puppies are choking her out. 
No. No, this is not going to happen very easily with all of them in here. Thank you. Thank you. Have your treat. Gently get her used to directing her. Just like you had a regular collar on her. It's the same. Okay? Whenever you start walking her and she's pulling, a quick, this is a good idea. This you can hopefully see right here. Do you see how it's super loose? Just by being re letting my hand down, sit. Do you see that? I hope you guys can see that. No, I can't. So it's going to instantly just release on its own right here. Okay? If you have it on correctly. So if you're gentle with it, it's not going to bother her. But when she doesn't behave, then all you have to do is, it's not hard. It's just gentle. And you're taking and telling her where to go. If she, if she doesn't respond to any of that, make sure that this, this one I have on her is too big, too big, okay? So keep that in mind. I just grabbed whatever one was up there. If you're walking her and she's still not obeying and she doesn't care because it's down here too low, you, this isn't effective. So it has to be up under, up above, sorry, up above here and right under her ears. If it's right here, whenever you go this way, she's going to go that way. When you go this way, she's going to go that way. And you can easily just... Do you see how it's just going? I know it's silver, so it's hard for you guys to see. But whenever I pull, it tightens. When I release, it releases. And she's going to do whatever I, whatever I tell her to do because she doesn't have a choice. So she doesn't have a say. I have the say. I have control. She doesn't have control. She's not going to like it at first. She'll get used to it. She'll get over it real quick. I'm almost like, thank you. <laughs> She's like, really? I'm the guinea pig? Okay. Huh. Can All I, right. Can that I was a one? long one. But I just wanted to show her. Okay. Um, when will Skye's puppies be offered and when will they go home? Who is that? Liz. Liz, you need to read your email. <laughs> um, I put in the email that they'll be offered in a week or so. And... They are four weeks old tomorrow, so they would go home in four weeks. <laughs> what? <laughs> you. <laughs> what? You need to read your email. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> well, this is the deal. I know, guys. I'm sometimes, I have no filter, and I'm very straightforward. But it was all in the email. I said it would probably be next week, blah, blah, blah. Huh. Uh, Sean said, will foods with blueberries help with tear stains? I don't know. Oh. Because of the antioxidants? Um, but the food we feed has antioxidants. Is that why you're thinking that, Sean? Michelle said that she tried Greek yogurt and it worked a little bit at least. It lessened it. Yeah, I have heard of that too, but we don't give all of that stuff. Except if we put it in a Kong, maybe, but it's not something we're going to give all the time. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you, Natasha. I don't like to give all these other things. What I would say is maybe doing, um, like, Missing Link or something that has additional antioxidants and vitamins and stuff. And... Honestly, the new vet vitamins might help a lot. Um, and then <laughs> bottled water potentially might help. There's a lot of things. It's like trial and error um, that we have to try and see what will what will hopefully eliminate it. Um, Liz said, LOL, sorry, I have the patience of a toddler. <laughs> <laughs> and then she said, love it, and everybody said, LOL. And then Tanya said, I forgot about the email, too. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I love you guys. I still love you guys. I just sometimes am overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to pick puppy names. Oh, yeah. Okay, hang on. Let me do a few questions really quick. I have like a million of them because you had that long. I had line. to give, I had to give Emily an explanation. Okay. Um, oh my God. Yeah. Hey. He's four weeks old, mister. He's going to kick your butt. He weighs more than you. Um, do you have any news on um, Taz's testicles is basically the question. Um, they're still bouncing. 
So they were there, they're not, they're there, they're not. Um, but he's almost 11 weeks now. So. Well, that kind of answers Tanya's question. When are you planning to retire Cannon? Yeah, it just depends. Um, I'm actually hoping to breed him. So I'm thinking I'm going to breed him to Lily um, to try to get another boy just in case. Um, Lily is not related to anybody here. So Lily came from um, Siggy's owner that stopped breeding, my girlfriend Jen. So I, of course, if I'm going to try to keep something, I want it that's not related to a lot of the other dogs. So it has to be like an outside. I tried it anyways. Thank you, Liz. She said, um, mm -hmm. love you, Desiree. Thank you for being patient <laughs> with me and all of my emails asking where I am on the list. Oh, I love you too. I love all of you guys. Thank you for understanding, not hating me because. Oh. <laughs> hey, mister. No. Um, Sean said, yes, that's what he meant. I think about the antioxidants. Yeah. And, and the food we feed is pretty high in antioxidants. Um, so uh, I don't know if that would help. I think the process of elimination is going to be the water, the food, um, the weather, of course, the litter box, once they get out of that. Because something that's relatively new for us is the litter boxes. Is that causing it potentially? Maybe. I don't know. Um, Tony said, what do you do if a creek hide doesn't want to eat their food because they're bored of it? I used to say tough luck, um, but I will say like with Nola, I spoil her. Um, because she, she's just, she burns off her energy really, really fast and she's really small. So she doesn't even eat very much to begin with. So I started supplementing, um, her. So if they do get bored and they aren't eating it, you can always try to switch up the flavor first. If you switch up the flavor within the same brand and same company, then, um, maybe they'll want to eat it it doesn't work for that one she's like you aren't tricking me i know now it's not that she doesn't eat but she definitely is the slowest eater and probably the finickiest how do you guys all know do you hear the sound of crinkle and they know i have food so i bought her um some merrick's backcountry which is raw and fused hoping that this would entice her um to eat more, she eats, but it doesn't really make, doesn't make her gain any weight. So honestly, it's literally like just adding something in with her food to help, um, or going raw or adding a topper. But this has these, these raw infused pieces, which everybody loves. But that's not what all's in here. Like there's kibble. And so of course, look at her. She's she's gonna eat it now because Everybody everybody's knows. eating it. Um, so she'll she'll eat these right off the bat. But I am not going to, I refuse to switch one dog to raw. I'm not doing it. So I'll supplement, I'll add some <laughs> topper, I'll try to do something. They're all going crazy for this. So this is a good idea for like um freeze-dried or infu raw infused um, stuff is a great way to train as well. But honestly, it's really hard. If the dog is very finicky and nothing else works. Sandy, that's your good. puppy right there. He's going crazy for it. So I feel you, trust me. Kira's, hey Kira, you know what to do. Just, sorry. That's better, thank you. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Uh, Lindsay said, I totally understand that you need a break. Oh. This is about um, when breeding dogs. Yeah. Um, but Sit. you also know that we're all puppy crazy. Can you give us an idea on how long your break might last? I, too, have toddler patients. <laughs> um, I mean, I only get a few breaks a year. Usually around Christmas time, um, I get a break. And then 
um, in usually like April or May, I'll get a break. So it's not like it's a huge break, but I do need a break. We all need a break. You guys are not eating at all. No, we can't have it all. Um, Tony said, wait, do you litter box train all of your dogs, not just Siggy's litter? Um, I did start with doing everybody because it's so much easier. Hey, hey, Kara, that baby is four weeks old. Um, it is so much easier for me for cleaning purposes. Um, I wouldn't say they're fully litter box trained, but they're pretty good when they leave here. That's for sure. Uh, but it is so much easier for us to be able to be in here and not be constantly cleaning up pee or poop all over the place. Um, and just go scoop the litter box. A breeze. And I wish you two would stop it. Your sisters. Um, I wish I would have done it a long time ago. It's definitely a lot easier. Uh, They're all going crazy for this. We got to do names, Alexis, and we got to give away our gifts. I know. It's insane. Uh, Gary no. said, you mentioned an app a few lives ago that would help with new puppy owners, but I think you didn't get around to saying the name of the app. Um, I, uh, I don't know. Is she, is that Carrie Carrie? No. No. Um, no, I, this is a new Carrie. I did put it on one of them. There are several um, that we found that we liked. And unfortunately, my phone is, oh, wait, I could probably do this on an iPad. Here. It's my, there's a few that I like um, that we use. All right, let's see. You guys got slobber all over me now. Hold on. Okay, one thing that I like a lot that I use whenever, um, the last one, when Sky was delivering puppies, I think, is Barkio. It's B-A-R-K-I-O. Barkio is pretty cool. Um, I'm going to bring this up close. If, this only works for you guys, if you are trying to use a device as a uh, webcam to be able to check on your dog. So if it, it's only Apple um, products, and if you have an iPad at home, then you can connect through it um, via the internet and um, use it as a webcam to check on your dog, which is super cool. And you could set it up to tell you uh, if you um, want to know if they're being too noisy or if you just want to um, chime in and look at it, it's pretty cool. And then, um, hold on. I don't have everything on the side that I do it. After this question, we're going to do names. Oh, you're biting me. Here, take him. <laughs> he just bit my leg. <gasps> we're going to do names okay. and um, the giveaway. Okay, cool. Why don't you start on that and we can come we can come back to her and I'll I'll pull these up. Okay. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Okay, so our winners are uh, oh Sue God. Smith for the super chat. Awesome. Congratulations, Sue. So she's getting the gator. Okay. And Tanya is getting the mask. Yay! Congratulations, guys. Okay. And then our U names, we have Uno, Ursula, Unique. Wait, Uno with a U? Yeah, like the game Uno. Like one oh, yeah, in yeah, Spanish. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, Ursula, Ulysses, um, Utah, Usher. Kylie likes Ugg boot. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and Uzi. And um. Are you listening? I am. Umd. No, um. U-M-M. Um. -M -M. um <laughs> Kylie and I like um, Utah for the girl. Uh-huh. Usher for one of the boys. And uh, Ulysses. Okay. So I think those are our three. That's fine. I gotta clean up pee. Spur of my life. Um, and then I have the, you know, I have the, uh, 
I didn't even see because I was busy getting this stuff. I didn't see who did this. I have the apps. Okay. Okay. Are you? Is that good or? That was it. Okay. Cool. All right. So there's a couple. Good pup is a cool one. Good pup. Um. Social puppy. It's social puppy, and then it, after social puppy, it says dog training app. Dog assist. So dog assist, and then it has a dash potty training. And then puppy potty log. So if you're doing potty training, who's, who is that? <laughs> who is that? Hi, Missy. You are brave. You're going to go from there to there. Here, you're all soaking wet. What were you doing? Playing in the water? Um, so puppy potty log is for if you are trying to keep track of how often your puppy should go out or how many times they did go to the bathroom or they didn't go to the bathroom. That one was kind of cool. Um, I liked dog assist. Um, Barky was the one I told you. There's some others that I don't use, but I found that would be probably beneficial if you guys are traveling with your dogs. Bring Fido. Bring Fido is um, an app that will help you uh, find pet-friendly pet hotels, pet -friendly hotels and places like food, um, places, um, and that was it. Those are the ones that I had listed. I'm sure there's a million other, but those are the ones that I, by the way, I bought a couple of those. They're not all free. Okay. Are we good? Um, ready for the next question? Yes. Um, I have a clique guy who is very jealous when I pet other dogs. Do you think it would be okay if I tried to get a second clique guy? Um, I mean, is it outside of your home, I'm guessing, that the dog is jealous of that attention? I've got one who's super jealous of attention. Um, if I give it to anybody else, she's not aggressive though. So is your dog just jealous and wants your attention or is it aggressiveness behavior? Um, because if it is aggressive behavior, then you're just gonna have to remember that if you do add another dog, it's important to give your first dog just as much alone time and its own things as it's always had so that it doesn't develop any more jealous tendencies. Hopefully they could hear me. Um, and, and have resentment. <laughs> they can't see you barking at her. Um, we don't want your dog to have resentment. <laughs> so I would say it's okay. You could, as long as your dog is not showing aggressive behavior. It's just wanting your attention. Out of curiosity. <laughs> good girl, Nala, for being a good girl. Come on. Out yeah. of curiosity, with Sassy's puppies going home on Christmas Eve, will you allow picking up that day? Um, it's just funny you ask that because me and my husband were talking about that. And he's like, well, what are we going to do? And I said, you know, it'll just depend. Um, we usually do have family on Christmas Eve. Um, this year's so different. I mean, everything's so different, you know, not having big gatherings and everything is just so different. So I don't know um, if it'll be Christmas Eve or the day before um, that they will go home. Chances are they can go home on Christmas Eve. Um, yeah, either that or the day before. Um, are you litter training or litter box training Sky's puppies and any idea if a dog would share a litter box with cats? Um, I will say yes, we are litter boxing um, Sky's puppies. If I only have one litter and it's a couple of puppies, I'm not too worried about it. But when I've got multiple puppies all in a room and they run and play, you see how crazy it gets when they're all running and playing. If the majority of them can go in there, they're not going to be rolling and trampling through it. So that's why um, I enjoy that, and it just makes our life a lot easier. But one or two puppies, I don't always have to do it. 
Um, with regards to cats and a dog sharing, I would say probably not because your dog will probably eat your cat's poop. That's just the, the truth. You can't even see her behind the chair. I moved it, it's just. <laughs> no, it's just a sweat. I'm not gonna bark. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, buddy. Hi. Tanya said, how old is Nala? And when are you planning on breeding her for the first time? Oh, Nala be nice. Um, I think she's actually getting a little swollen. Um, she is, she was born in May. So she is over 18 months. Um, so her next breeding, I mean, her next season, I will put her with Ozzy and see. Um, Ozzy's the smallest male. So we'll see if, yeah. So I'm gonna breed her. Um, but I really need to get weight on her to breed her and to just know that she's not um, too skinny and not giving enough nutrients to the babies. Because you're so tiny. You're too tiny. Huh. She's an almost girl though. Uh, Sean said we got her bow and it's awesome. Oh, cool. Um, hang on. Oh, uh, Tanya asked, when do you think you'll be able to resume flying puppies to owners? Oh, I don't know. Uh, it's crazy. I don't know when the airlines are going to really open things back up. We keep hearing, oh, it's going to open back up. It's not going to open back up. So I don't know. Um, American Airlines is limited. They will let us ship, but it's just been so hot. I mean, I'll be, okay, it is November 5th, and it is 93 today? It was 93 today. Um, I can't ship a puppy <laughs> with American if it's that hot. So we are just gonna start cooling down and hopefully I can ship with American, but I don't know. I have no control over that. Tracy said I've fostered cats and my dogs did eat their poop. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't know what it is, but dogs for some reason will eat the cat's poop in the cat litter box. They don't care. And those are all our questions for now. Yay. We only have 20 minutes left. Oh, yeah. Sue said, I'll drive cross country to get one. <laughs> yeah, we do have a lot of families that unfortunately during all of this, they're going to have to um, either fly or drive to come and get them um, because we're just so restricted. And, you know, April and May, I would have thought that it was gonna open back up. Like, it just, it's crazy. Crazy times, that's for sure. Crazy, crazy times. Huh. Yeah, mama's girl. Um, Lindsay said, I know I'm being annoying, I'm sorry, but when do you expect to start breeding after autumn? Um, well, ruse in season, so. It's just that I don't have anybody pregnant. So when I say a break, that just means like, there's no one else lined up like to have babies right now, but ruse in season. So nine, 10 weeks from now, I'm sure we'll probably have puppies, but just after autumn, I don't have anybody else pregnant right now. So we will get a break because bless you. Autumn's um, puppies will go home before, wow, jeez, maybe I won't get a break. If Rue conceives, I might not even get a break. Bummer. So anyways, if I get a break, it's like a month, if that. It's not a big deal. It is for me. It's not um, Catherine said that she has two cats and she'll have to keep the puppy away from the litter. <laughs> Yeah, um, definitely they will do it. Um, Lauren said, the only thing about bring Fido, sometimes they say dog friendly, but it's not best to, it's not best to call ahead just to be on the safe side. Yeah, good idea. 
Liz said, I'll gladly deliver pups anything to get on a flight. Um, we can't wait to see Nala have babies. <laughs> She's the best. Like, she loves babies. She wants her own babies she so loves them. bad. I, earlier today, I had just her and, Sto and Stone in here. Um, and she was just loving on him, and he was playing with her, and I did some recording because, um, of course, I have to offer him soon, so I, you'll see it in the video that I produced this weekend. Um, oh, here they go. Here go the crazy. But yeah, she, lo she wants to be a mommy. She loves babies. Huh. <laughs> Um, how many, I shut my iPad off, I can't see. We have 84 thumbs up and 76 on now. Okay. Um, yeah. do you recommend calming treats for flights when picking up an eight-week-old puppy? No, you don't need any of that. They're fine. They do just fine. Um, they don't even know what's going on. They're more upset that they're in a crate by themselves or under the seat by themselves. But they do fine. You just make sure they're a little tired, that they are have their exercise, and they will go to sleep. Uh -huh. Everybody at a local Kwikai meet last week said Pixie was the prettiest. Aww. Yay. Where, um, they're up north somewhere, I think. Um, they are. They are. Can I get a close up of tear stains if any of the puppies have any? Yes. I mean, when they're this young, you can tell that they're starting to tear up um, and get that, but it's not super bad. You'll see some dogs um, in photos. Oops, I'm sorry, Papa. Will be pretty bad. Um, trying to see. So this is not like super bad like you've seen on some dogs, but. And they're talking about um, doing meetups. They said they're gonna I have know. to do a Bay Area Kikas meetup. Uh, you know what? Honestly, like if it ever gets back to normal, it would be cool if I didn't have any puppies to have a meetup in the play yard outside. It would be super cool. So do you see these little, these little marks going down on both sides? That's what I'm talking about. And that is from his eyes watering. <laughs> He's so tired. Um, it's from his eyes watering and causing some type of staining there. Hi, BB. Can you explain how uh, tear stains happen? It's, there's, no, uh, there's no one way. There's a lot of ways that it can happen. I mean, it's a process of elimination to figure out what that is to hopefully prevent it but it's not always preventable. It can actually be um, something that's genetic or something that's in their eye that is causing it, which could- Leave her alone, she's sleeping. <laughs> Leave your sister alone. Um, but yeah, there's just a lot of things that it could be. There's not one there. <laughs> your sister says enough, she's sleeping. Yeah, she got you. <laughs> But his coat is to die for. Come on, look at that coat. Hi, Kara. Hi, Mama. Hi. 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 Hi, baby. I've been working with Kira on sit and sit and down and to stop biting. Um, I know Emily was asking about this too. Emily was asking what we can do to um, work on puppy biting. And Kira does that. Kira, come. I know we're going to be done here soon. Come here. Come here, girl. Come here. Come here. Come here. Uh, Tony no. said, how do puppies act in a car ride right home, everyone. and what should you do? How do they act? You should carry them, hold them if you can. If you are um, coming alone, then you're going to have to put them in a, a crate or a... Uh, seat belt carrier something so that they don't cause an accident <laughs> to you too much. Um, 
But if you can, if you have somebody with you, then of course we, we recommend just to, um, to hold them, to let them bond with you and um, get used to your smell and scent. You know, they're going through a lot at one time whenever they leave their family. And so we don't want to just instantly grab them and put them in a crate and um, make them scream and cry. So if you can bond with them, fine. That's best, but not everybody can. As far as um, what do you need to do, is, I, they're fine. <laughs> it's not a big deal. If you're going across country, it might be a big deal. But if you're just driving for a few hours or so, it's not, It's they're fine. They'll get used to it really quickly. They've been in the car before. Um, they're usually pretty social and friendly, and so they're just gonna be giving you kisses, and honestly, they'll probably fall asleep. Regarding shipping pups, is there a bottom temp to ship? It just occurred to me that it might be too cold in addition to too hot. Yeah, there is. Um, there is. It's, it varies depending on the airline. So every airline is a little different, uh, but there are. It's anywhere from um, 45 to 25, depending on the airline. And that's a big jump um, because... It doesn't have anything to do with the temperature inside the plane. It has to do with the temperature when they land and where the dogs are taken off of the plane and how they're transported. So United Airlines has um, cargo vans, vehicles that go straight to the tarmac and get the pets. Um, not every airline does. And so for that reason, they might have to be on the tarmac for any given amount of time, whether it's 10 minutes, 20 minutes. And so if it's too hot or if it's too cold, it's not safe for them. And so that's why there's restrictions. Tracy said it's 45 for Alaska. I worked for them. Yeah. So Alaska is the same as, hey, honey, the light is flickering right here. Can you push it up? Um, yeah, Alaska's, I think you're right, the same as American. Oh Hello God. from Singapore. <laughs> Hi from Singapore. Wow, that is awesome. Hi, Jonathan. Um, that is cool. Is, um, hey, Michelle, are you still on here? Klaus's family? Um, I don't know, give it a minute since they're... Is that Rue? Yeah, I, I brought, I... I can't even speak. It sounds like she's in brain germ. She is. I was going to see if Michelle. Was annoying you. I know, she was annoying me. I wanted to see if um, Michelle was on here because Michelle's getting him. I love his paws. His paws are the cutest paws. Like, they are so fake looking. <laughs> I love his paws. Do you guys love his paws? Oh my god, they're cute. Now they're going to focus on the dogs because they all came in. Um, are tear stains permanent or do they go away with time or cleaning or diet change? Yeah, they can go away. I would not say they're permanent. However, they could potentially be permanent if your dog is um, lacking something in the, in the, the uh, ducts. Like say the tear ducts themselves, if they're clogged and they have to constantly be flushed. Or if they... Um, have ingrown hairs that go the other way so their eyelashes can grow the other way into their eye and they're constantly irritating the eye um, so there are some things that um may be more difficult to get them to go away oh michelle said that she was here <laughs> yay um so it is possible that you can uh do a process of elimination and clear it up but not always uh, here we go, here we go. Can they be in the carriers that fit under your seat? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I've traveled to dog shows with a size of Rue in a carry-on under the front seat. Hi, sweetie girl. I see you. Um, how do you pick the best crate size? Yeah. Oh my God, this is why you got it away. You act like you get no love. Sit. <laughs> Um, when they're little, it needs to be very, very, very small. And so it can't be too big because you don't want them too big so that they potty in their crate. Now, if you're talking about on the airplane, is that the same person? No. Right? 
Uh, no, one looks Panya. Okay, so if you're talking about for your home and for your pet at home, um, you just have to start off small. It's not going to be one size fits all, um, and it's not going to be one size less forever. It's going to be, you have to start off small to slightly larger than your puppy at eight weeks old, and then you're going to move up as they grow out of it. I will tell you, Pika was about 18 pounds whenever she was a lot older. She's a lot overweight. She literally would climb into the tiniest, Newborn tiniest puppy. puppy crate and barely turn herself around and lay in there. They like confined spaces. They like to den. Um, and I like my laces. But, of course, you don't want your dog to be stuck in a tiny crate. But, again, it's not going to be too big. Just to be comfortable, and that's it. A crate is not meant for them to stay in for eight hours a day. So it's, unless it's, they're sleeping in it. But during the day, it's not something that they're going to be in all the time. I know. You have nowhere to lay down and chew on that because they're trying to get your phone. Huh? You're fine. You're fine. Um, Liz said, do they get those curled nails? Um, their nails should be trimmed um, or they should be worn down on their own. So they should not have those nails that are really long and curl over, no. Okay. If, if in fact the dog doesn't wear them down on their own, then they should be trimmed. <laughs> what are you guys so busy? We are almost done. Is it 53? Yeah. Oh. Today's a slow day. I feel like I finished that topic really fast. Was I talking too fast? Hold on, I gotta get that bone from that puppy. Small bone. No, he's not getting it. You could lick that off. All right, I think we're done. Yeah, let's call it a night. What do you guys think? A few minutes early? I think you know. <laughs> Bruce tail is the foofiest. It is the foofiest. Yeah. It'll fan you for sure. Huh. Yeah. It'll fan you. You're not getting it? No. 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 How often should you walk a newly vaccinated dog? Uh, if you don't have a yard and you aren't able to get your dog exercise within your home, you're going to have to find a way to get your dog exercise because otherwise it's going to drive you crazy. Um, so it just depends on your situation. Um, if you don't have the ability to get them exercise, you're going to have to walk them a few times every day. If you do, then you don't. It's, it's like, it's hard because not every situation is the same. Um, plus, you need to introduce them and socialize them as much as you can. So, in order to do that, you need to do it every day. Um, otherwise, you're not going to have as well-rounded social of a dog. Are you ready to say goodbye? Are you ready to say goodbye? Huh? Sandy's saying goodnight to her little her son. He's out. Look, he's sleeping. He's fast asleep. Come here, Kara. Rue, you're just loving everything, huh? You're just chowing down on all the bones that I put out. <laughs> Come here. I'm surprised nobody ever says anything about how Rue's tail just goes wherever. <laughs> She's a puppy girl. Get up there. No, get up there. Get up there. Go. Are you sure? She says, I'm not allowed up there. <laughs> Should we let her run the show? Look. You want to run the show? No, let's just shoot and run the show. Huh. All right. I'm going to grab puppy. Say goodbye. How's that? Come here. Who's saying goodbye? Rue. Rue, you're too fat. Can't even carry you. She won't even put her ears up. All right. We'll get a big dog. Will she have her bone in her mouth? <laughs> you got a whistle. All right, I'll guys. Just, I'll just oh, say her oh, name. Yeah. Um... As always, I gotta, I gotta go really low when I have her. As always, can I talk? Huh? Can I talk? Can I talk? Um, thank you guys for joining us and supporting our channel. We will see you guys next week.
Thank you again. Until next time. Bye. She's, no, she's, she's like, no. Don't, don't.